Germany out. Brazil through. Welcome to your Match Day 14 World Cup review. What a wonderful time for football. Yes, the massive news of the day. Germany, the world champions, have been eliminated, knocked out of the World Cup at the first stage, the group stage. Finished bottom of their group, a group that contained Mexico, Sweden and South Korea. From the outset, most, play, most people, most pundits, so-called experts would have said Germany definitely making it through this group. I, for one, I thought they were making it through. I, I had my doubts about the Germany team. Go back and watch my preview. I said they're not going to make it past the quarterfinals. Their form in 2008 have been very poor. Their selection process leaves a lot to be desired. And I was not convinced about the squad and the manager going to this tournament. Now, I didn't expect to get past the quarters, which for Germany would have been a failure in and of itself. But I did not expect this. They played terrible against Mexico. Granted, Mexico were brilliant, but defensively, Germany, it's like they forgot how to do it. In the second game against Sweden, they were very lucky to still be in the tournament. Tony Cruz were absolutely wonder free kick in the last moments, which really kept them in the tournament. And then today, South Korea, the so-called worst team in the group. Germany, they just weren't at it. They just did not have what it took. They created probably one or two at best clear cut chances, but the reality is their attack lacked venom, their defense lacked steel, and their midfield was weak. And it all summed up that come the 90th minute when they were pressing and pressing because they knew what Sweden were doing to Mexico in the other group game, they needed to get that win. And a win would have taken them through. All they needed was one goal. Muller came off the bench, couldn't do anything. Werner started, couldn't do anything. Ozzy was on the pitch, couldn't do anything. But South Korea, on the break, caught them, bam. Linesman tried to flag it offside. Thank God for VAR. I know we've cussed VAR before, and in some games it hasn't worked, and some games it had. But today, for me, legitimised why FIFA had to bring VAR into this World Cup. You, you could not afford another year of Germany getting away with it because of refereeing or linesman decisions. It happened with England in 2010. South Korea were not going to be the victims this time. The goal was allowed, 1-0 to South Korea, three minutes of stopping time, Germany needed two. They didn't even look like scoring one. Even Manuel Neuer, they had all 11 men in South Korea's half. Manuel Neuer ended up just outside the area, lost the ball, one ball over the top, and Hyung Min Sun was there to wrap up a famous, famous night for South Korea. Four times in five years, the world champions going into the World Cup have failed to get out of the group. Germany have added their name to that list. It is remarkable. Now, me, as you can see, I'm supporting Brazil. I'm happy they're out. Now, one, because I don't think they deserve to go through the way that they played in the first two games. And two, it makes it, you know, on paper, easier for Brazil to win the World Cup. But something inside of me, a small thing, I wanted them to go through. I wanted them to go through in second so Brazil could exact the real revenge for what happened four years ago. It wasn't to be, but I'll take it. Germany out. See you later. Arrivederci. In the other game, as I mentioned, Sweden battered Mexico, did what they have to do, 1-3-0, top of the group, on goal difference. They will face Switzerland in the last 16. Switzerland drew 2-2 with Costa Rica. Very, you know, entertaining game. A game that in the end didn't really matter because Switzerland, because of other results, they were always going to end up going through. Costa Rica already going into the game, had no chance of going through. All they really were playing for was pride and they scored their first goal of the tournament, which means all 32 teams have now scored in this year's World Cup. It's been an absolutely fantastic tournament. Their last goal, the equalising goal in the last dying embers was a Brian Ruiz penalty that came off the underside of the bar and hit the goalkeeper Summer. 
the rebound into the goal. 2-2, exciting finish. The result that Switzerland needed to go into the last 16. And a tie against Sweden that they think they have a chance of winning. So I think they're happy on their side. Brazil, in their final game of the group, they needed only a draw against Serbia, a strong Serbia team, um, very powerful physically. And Brazil got the win they needed, 2-0 victory. First opener in the first half from Paulinho, beautifully weighted ball over the top from Coutinho. Paulinho, the Barcelona midfielder, ran onto it and clipped it just over the keeper into the empty net. There was about a five minute if that spell in the second half where Serbia had Brazil on the ropes and they had to defend, the ball bounced where it had to as far as Brazil were concerned. The, the biggest chance fell to Mitrovic, a cross came in from the right from Lalic, um, uh, Alisson didn't deal with it properly, Mitrovic could have headed into a near empty net but he headed straight at Thiago Silva who was standing about three yards in front of the open goal, blocked into the keeper's arms and that was really the end of any threat from Serbia. From there on Brazil dominated, they got their second, a crucial second from Thiago Silva, Neymar corner whipped him brilliantly to the net post. Uh, Thiago Silva lost Matic's marker and headed it past the keeper. And after that, it was a stroll. They passed so beautifully. Serbia could not get near to them. Really, it could have and should have been more. A few openings, a few shots, a few chances were created. But 2-0 was the final result. And Brazil, they're warming up. They're warming up. They've got Mexico in the last round. If the if the game against Sweden is anything to go by, then Brazil should be confident of putting a few goals past Mexico. They definitely defended better in this game than I saw, especially in the first game against Switzerland. Um, but they're definitely improving. The only issue they have now is that Danilo, obviously, he got injured um, after the first game of the group. Costa got injured. Douglas Costa got injured in the second game of the group. And now Marcelo limped off after 10 minutes of the third game of the group. They are really going to their reserves right now. Fagner um, is the right back. Felipe Luis came in and did very well. But if Marcelo doesn't recover, and if Costa doesn't recover, or maybe even Danilo, um, they could have. They're going to have to stick with what would have been their second choice um, fullbacks going forward in this tournament. But. Once you've got players like Neymar, Coutinho, Gabriel Jesus, there's been a bit of stick about him and his performances so far. The, the team is getting results. Um, the manager does trust him. We've seen that throughout the, the qualifying campaign and leading up to the World Cup. And of course, the first three games, there's been many calls for Firmino. And me personally, I think Jesus has done brilliantly in a Brazil shirt. I understand why they play him, because he offers something different as a number nine. Whereas uh, Neymar, the likes of Neymar Coutinho playing at number 10, nine and a half whatever position, just behind the striker. Something that Firmino also does. So if you have all of them in the pitch, the question is going to be asked, who is the man going to be running in behind? But I have to say, Firmino has improved in the last year as a number nine. We've seen he's in the form of his life, coming out of the brilliant season for Liverpool. He had, um, and he's come off the bench in the, in the group games as well as in the pre-warm-up games for the World Cup and he's scored goals, he's affected the game, he's uh, offered a different threat. I was surprised that he didn't start this game in a game that Brazil had to really win to secure top spot but because they've done it I'm not expecting him to start in the last 16 against Mexico but Firmino off the bench as an option is a brilliant position for Brazil and Tite to be in. It's been a wonderful day as a Brazil fan. It's been a wonderful day for the World Cup. This tournament just keeps on giving and giving more. That's it from me with my Match Day 14 World Cup review. Comment below all your thoughts on today's epic, epic results. And I'll see you soon.